I'm Scott Allen Miller. This is my life living in Leon, Nicaragua. We've had so much rain that it just let up, so I'm really quickly trying to get some videos done. But the area where I often film, which is normally mud or grass, is now covered in moss. That is how much it's been raining. So today I got the question, and I thought this was an interesting change of pace. Was well, Scott, do you think that the Department of Rivas is the most interesting in Nicaragua? What an interesting question. And uh, no, I do not. But let's explain why. But first, hit that bump. Okay, why is Rivas potentially the most interesting departmento? That's a good question, because a lot of people probably think so, and for a lot of people, it probably is. So, okay, for me, I have very different taste in a lot of things than most people. You may have realized that I live in Nicaragua, and most people do not. So I'm already starting from a place of having a slightly different worldview and look on things and, and things that I want out of the place that I live, for example, and the places that I travel. So take this into account when I'm saying that Rivas for me is not the pinnacle of Nicaraguan culture. However, for an awful lot of people, I recognize that Rivas probably is. And here's why. One, it has San Juan del Sur. This is the big, calm beach with the big party crowd that is unique within Nicaragua. San Juan del Sur is the big beach destination, the big tourist destination, and it is chock full of mostly Americans, Canadians, and the leftovers are a lot of Australians, New Zealanders, and Europeans who are there on vacation, often as backpackers, and often there for giant parties. It's not quite uh, Coachella, but it is pretty big, and it is a lot of fun, admittedly. And if you're looking for that hooking up with other travelers and like just having that whole bunch of backpackers in your early 20s that are all out exploring the world together, experience, then San Juan del Sur is likely where you're going to run into the most of them and have like a giant just place to get together. It is the most obvious spot within Nicaragua that is on the Central American backpacking trail. It's the same group that you're going to run into in Antigua, for example, and Lago de Atitlan in Guatemala. If you're going up to those places and you want to maybe run into the same people again and you want to run into them at Boca de Torres in, uh, in Panama, yeah. That is San Juan del Sur for sure. You want to do the by the book. Every tourist does it on a pre-planned trail and it's going to feel basically like you went to Tulum and you're going to spend all of your time interfacing with other travelers. You could do the same thing in Thailand, for example. Yes, this is the place to be. If when you go to Spain, your idea of a great place to go is Marbella. Yes, San Juan del Sur and Rivas are exactly what you're looking for. Also within Rivas is some truly amazing stuff. For example, it has a huge coastline on the Pacific Ocean beyond San Juan del Sur. So you have tons of beaches within Rivas. You have a reasonably sized city of Rivas itself. You have the beautiful village of San Jorge. You have a lot of waterfront against Lago Nicaragua, which is an immense lake, the largest in the region, beautiful and really interesting. And very importantly, the dual volcanic island of Ometepe, which is absolutely unique, falls within the confines of Rivas and is out in the lake. These are the main things and sites of Rivas, and that is why Rivas tends to be pretty interesting. So if you're looking for that island thing, that volcano thing, the, the Lago Nicaragua thing, the ocean front, the backpacker path, all of that, Rivas is your place in most cases. So that is why people immediately think of Rivas as being potentially the big place to go. It is where all the tourists that aren't really here to see Nicaragua, but are here to be tourists, tend to go. And let's be fair, the majority of people coming from North America and a lot coming from Europe and definitely the majority from Australia and New Zealand, that's what they're looking for. They're not looking for small village rural Mexico. They're looking for Tulum and Cancun and Cabo. They want places that have recognizable names that are famous on Instagram and are full of other tourists who have blazed those trails for them and lots of infrastructure that makes everything easy. And there's lots of reasons why that makes sense for a lot of people. So that is absolutely fine. And that is why Rivas is going to be for or if that is who you are, then Rivas is where you want to be. You want that soft introduction into Nicaragua while still getting amazing lakes, oceans, beaches, volcanoes, and volcanic island in a lake? Come on! Rivas is your place. Absolutely. Plus, you know, go check out the Malecon in San Jorge. You're going to be like, wow, this is like some cool Nicaragua stuff going on. Very different than like all the touristy things. And yet here it is right in this zone. Absolutely. And Rivas is a real city full of real people, real Nicaraguans doing normal things with very few tourists in the city or relatively few in the city. 
you can get a real feel for Nicaragua in the Rivas zone. But Rivas is the least populated of all of the traditional Nicaraguan uh, departmentos. That is all the ones that are not the autonomous mosquito regions to the east that border the Caribbean. So of this, Rivas stands out as kind of the hinterland within the hinterland as it borders Costa Rica. And it borders Costa Rica where Costa Rica is least populated. Of course, that portion of Costa Rica used to be Rivas, so that explains that as well. The region of Rivas is a lot like California, except without the big population, in that once upon a time it was a single place called California, single place called Rivas, and a national border was eventually put in the middle. The difference is uh, California used to be from Mexico and the United States shaved off the north part. All of Rivas used to be part of Nicaragua. Costa Rica shaved off the south part, and the south part is now known as the Nicoya, and the north part is still known as Rivas. Of course, it was never part of Costa Rica, or was not, not a part of Costa Rica for very long. Very, very brief, very momentary thing, but there is a lot of shared, and that's named the Nicoya Peninsula, means the Nicaraguan Peninsula. So we have clear reasons why Rivas would be super interesting and why you probably want to have it on most any vacation coming to Nicaragua. If you're coming here as a tourist and you want to see the country, you're not going to want to skip San Juan del Sur in a lot of cases, and you're definitely not going to want to skip Ometepe if you have enough time to go to it. However, if you're not going to one of those two destinations, you may not want to come down to Rivas at all because the rest of it is pretty much just beaches, and the, those beaches are mostly expat beaches. The entire Rivas zone along the coast was traditionally empty and now is inhabited by little enclaves where people, the entire, like if you live in Nicaragua and you go to Rivas beaches, you're going there to be with expats. That is the thought process. No Nicaraguan goes there thinking, oh, all the Nicaraguans are going to be there. That's the place to be. Absolutely not. They have all the northern beaches for that, which are almost all Nicaraguans. The Rivas beaches are all but empty except for a bunch of expats. And so that can be really cool. You can find some nice restaurants down there. It's a very different vibe from up north, but mostly it's a vibe vibe of being very empty and completely foreign. So you have that Mexican, Yucatan, Mayan, Riviera kind of feel on a tiny, tiny, tiny scale because it doesn't have the big development in most cases. So it's a kind of empty zone with just tons of expats. For most of us, we would define interesting as being away from the expats. Not that we want to completely avoid them, but it's hard to see a zone that is primarily expats as being interesting because most people find interest in this context to mean culturally interesting, a place where you would go and actually find something unique. Rivas, it's unique, lies almost entirely by having a large uh, uh, coastline against the lake, which is a very unique lake, and and the views of Ometepe and Ometepe itself. There's no way to get around the fact that having Ometepe gives Rivas a big advantage over anyone else, any other departmento in the country. But it's a little bit weird to shave off by departmental lines and say this is better because it has this island. It's all part of Nicaragua. But uh, if you really are making departmentos compete against it, each other, having Ometepe makes Rivas super interesting just because of that. But if we're looking at, let's say, Granada, Granada has the tourist city that has so much colonial structure, so much history, has the waterfront as well on Lago Nicaragua. Um, it has small villages outside of it. Personally, I would find and have found Granada to be more interesting. If I'm going for just a couple days, then going to Ometepe is a really great way to go, or going to San Juan del Sur for a few days can be really cool. But if I had to go for weeks at a time, had to put in real time somewhere, then Granada is going to be so much more interesting because you've got loads of restaurants and things to do and art galleries and just normal life. It's a large, vibrant city and easily accessible to other things. Rivas is remote far down in the south. So when you're thinking of Rivas, you're really thinking of an isolated area in the countryside. But when you're thinking of most of the rest of Nicaragua, you're looking at tightly integrated cities that connect to each other and have uh, good transportation between places. So it's a very different thing. But of course, then that's not fair if you're looking at it by limiting to a single departmento. For example, Messiah is super interesting, but is a very small departmento geographically. So while it has uh, an amazing lake, a really cool city, and some truly epic small villages, it doesn't have a lot else because the volcano that people associate with it is actually part of Managua. Now, of course, Managua being the giant city is probably more interesting than anywhere if you're really getting into the culture. You've got the vo the Vulcan Messiah, the volcano Messiah that you can go up and, and see open lava all the time. It erupts from time to time. That's that's really interesting. You have all the shopping and the big city culture and the, the government stuff and just all the big things because Managua is like a London, like the country centered on it. Plus, it has a waterfront on Lago Managua 
Nicaragua, which itself is interesting as well. It has um, all the, the nightlife, the bars, the clubs, the cocktail lounges, the so much live music. Managua really does have an edge on a lot of the country because of that. Carrasso to the south, if you're looking for more country living, but elegant country living, Carrasso doesn't have much for tourists, but boy, does it have a lot in culture and style. And so personally, I would find that region a lot more interesting than Rivas, but it doesn't have necessarily the, the giant, like epic, environmental issues like Ometepe, issue is the wrong term, but features like Ometepe. So it's easy to say, well, nothing's going to compete with Ometepe because it's this island. And that's valid for sure. But Carrasso, I find that the entire landscape and the way that the cities are, I find that just much more interesting. And of course, there's basically no expats there. There's some, but very few. And so being there is a completely different cultural experience. Coming up the west side, you've got Leon, which is where I live. This is a big city, famously the home of revolution. We have the beaches in the city. We have colonial infrastructure, a lot like uh, Granada, but a different architectural style. Um, we have, you know, the churches and, and just a lot of activity, a lot of nightlife, things that Rivas and that region doesn't have. So, and, and we have a lot more volcanoes. We're part of the big volcano zone here along with Chinandega to the north. Now, Chinandega, definitely a lot less interesting. Um, it doesn't have the tourist infrastructure, does have the volcanoes like Leon, does have the bay in the north. So that's pretty cool. The, the Bay of Fonseca, uh, Gulf of Fonseca, um, depending on where you are, it's called both. And, uh, and lots and lots of oceanfront as does does Leon, as does Managua, as does Carrasso. Messiah and Granada famously do not, but Granada does have lakefront. But then you have Boaco and Huigalpa, probably not as interesting as some of these, uh, just because they're more isolated. They don't have the volcanoes, but they do have mountains. They have a lot of farmland, and that can be interesting, but yeah, I can understand why something like a volcanic island is going to trump those. So Rivas is definitely not in last place, I would say, but going out to a Boaco or Huigalpa, you're definitely going to be getting deeper into Nicaraguan culture that has not interfaced with expats far more. And that, for me, there's nothing's going to be more interesting than the cultural experiences. So for me, those are actually the slam dunks as far as just what would be more interesting to do for a long period of time. As you go north, you've got Matagalpa, uh, Hinotega, Esteli, uh, uh, Akatal in Nueva Segovia. You've got Samoto in Madris. That region with all these little departmentos up there, those get, again, really far away from the tourists, really far away from the expats, and you're getting deep into real Nicaraguan culture that hasn't been heavily influenced by the outside. Of course, Granada, Managua, and León, that zone right through the middle, Amasaya, that those four through kind of a strip through the middle of the country are so important historically because they're the, you know, Granada and uh, Leon were the two powerhouse cities in the past. Messiah is considered the country's heartland and Managua is the current capital. So those four really represent where all the tourists and expats traditionally go when they're not in Rivas as enclave tourists, right? Is there, if they're integrating with society, this is likely where they're going to be for a lot of reasons. It's got the infrastructure, the history, the exposure. If you're going up into the mountains, yes, you're going to find the expats in some of those cities and some, maybe not. But you're getting to a much uh, much lower population density. The expats that are up there are few and far between, which is pretty fantastic if you're looking for that really awesome cultural experience. Uh, and in some cases, you could live in, in towns or even small cities that have none at all, or you'll never run into one kind of thing. And that, again, that's where it gets really interesting. Beautiful mountain scenery, little villages to go explore. The world is at your feet. And... It's super cheap because the fewer tourists, the cheaper it gets generally, although Leon is surprisingly cheap and we do still have tourists, just not that many. Um, but uh, you get the cooler weather up there. The mountain views are just spectacular. Honestly, nearly all of the country for me, I would rank as more interesting than Rivas. That doesn't mean I don't like Rivas. I do. Every time I drive through it, it's staggeringly beautiful, but it has very little land, first of all. It's not very big. It's a very large area because it covers a big portion of the lake, but the area on the lake is just water surface, right? So it's a little bit hard to be interesting other than the view. The island of Ometepe with 55,000 people on it is amazing and it's its own thing however being on the island for any long period of time you start to realize it's full of expats and while it's beautiful and interesting it's it does lack some things so people only tend to go for a couple days now i'd like to go and spend more time there really dig in find better places to go but every time i see someone posting about ometepe it's the same thing it's the backpackers the tv shows the people who want to get beautiful views but aren't actually digging into any culture the deep culture 
culture in Ometepe is mostly eroded. So it, it's beautiful, it's unique, but it isn't as interesting as it might seem. Um, I really think that uh, it, it really depends on your perspective. If you if you are a backpacker, you want to be with other backpackers, and absolutely nothing wrong with that. Rivas is going to be a slam dunk. You're going to find it beautiful and approachable and easy and fun, just filled with people to meet and talk to in English, hang out, make new friends, have a great time just seeing a beautiful country that's very safe. Great. Uh, but if you want to really get into Nicaraguan culture and find your interest through getting away from people who speak English, getting away from tourists, getting away from your, your comfort zone, and you want to really dig into being a part of Nicaragua, even if it's just for a vacation, and you want to explore culture and traditional food and, and you know, willing to walk the barrios and, and do roadside food stands and just go see how beautiful wild Nicaragua can be, I would say pretty much the entire rest of the country is going to meet your needs a little bit better. I totally understand why in the autonomous zones in the east, the lower population, the big distances between things makes it a little bit hard to compete on interest. Uh, a lot of people are interested in those zones, and certainly they're interesting, but they're uh, very lightly populated. So you're looking at lots and lots and lots of jungle driving to get between small villages. Uh, you're not getting, you know, Part of keeping things interesting is having enough people to have variations and interactions. So they suffer simply by being less populated. But certainly they have a lot of differences from other parts of Nicaragua. Completely different landscapes, different construction methods, different languages and cultures and histories and, and customs. And some really interesting cool stuff goes on out there. And of course, at some point we're going to get out there and film and that'll be fantastic. But I think if you're looking for who's the most interesting... Right? You have a lot of choices. It's very difficult to pick out. I would say your obvious ones for most interesting could be Granada, Leon, Managua, Matagalpa, or getting really wild and being like out in Madrid and Nueva Segovia where you're, you're far away from everything but in a completely different landscape up in the mountains and that kind of stuff. That would be my pick for what is most interesting, but you'll have to decide for yourself what type of things are most interesting for you. Thanks for the question. Thanks for joining me today. Like and subscribe if you'd like to help support the channel. You can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. As always, I will see all of you tomorrow. And your marching orders. Please click on one of the videos that pops up now. And if you don't see one that you like or see one at all, scroll down, find another video from mine or one of our associated friendly channels and uh, give them a watch instead.